Newton's second law is not nearly as long. It looks like this. The sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration, where both the force and the acceleration are vectors. Newton's second law, the net force equals mass times acceleration, where both the force and the acceleration are vectors. This symbol in front of the F is an uppercase sigma. It is a Greek letter. It literally means the net, the summation of. You are summing all of those. So you'll see me draw it like this. Sometimes you might have seen sigma drawn like this. You also might have seen it drawn like this. Or like this. There are all sorts of different ways that people draw sigmas. Most often you will see me draw it like this, or this, or this. All sorts of various incarnations of something that looks kind of like that. But realize it's supposed to look like this. It's a sigma. It means the net, the sum up. Newton's second law. We're going to now talk about and use Newton's second law. We're going to do that by way of example. We're going to return back to Christina. She is the object that I applied a force to and changed the state of motion of the object. Christina, do you remember this? Good. Do I need to do it again? No, good. So if you recall, I applied a force to Christina. What we're going to do is we're going to talk now with numbers having to do with that event. So here is my approximation of Christina and desk. There it is. It's a box. Look at it. What is the dot in the middle of that, Connor? Central force. That's OK. I didn't really define it. I only used the term once. Who can tell me what it was? The Center of mass, I didn't define it. It's just right now the dot where everything, all the forces are. Uh, the forces acting on Christina during this event. Lily, uh, you were right there. You saw it. Uh, what direction? Down. Good. Force of gravity. Keep going, Lily. Uh, the, the applied force. We'll put that to the right. straight up. And do you think there was friction? Yeah. Yeah. The force of friction in the opposite direction here from the force applied in opposing the motion. Again, we'll define the force of friction better later. Some givens. We will know that the force that I'm applying to uh, Christina and desk is 750 newtons. Let's say that the force of friction equals 650 newtons. Uh, and the total mass of Christina and desk uh, I don't know, I'll just guess. We'll go with 61 kilograms. We're going to figure out all sorts of stuff uh, in this problem, probably three or four different parts. The first thing we're going to figure out is the force of gravity acting on Christina and Des. Please help me figure out the force of gravity acting on Christina and Des. Emma? Um, the force of gravity is equal to mass times what is G? 9.8 meters per second squared. Positive or negative? Positive. Are you sure? Yes. Absolutely positive on that one? Yes. You sure? Uh-huh. OK. Good. So the mass is 61 multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is a not positive 9.8 meters per second squared. We can figure out the force of gravity acting on Christina and Dex, please. I'm sorry, I missed that ticket. 597.8 newtons. 597.8 newtons. Uh, that would be the force of gravity. If we were to give it as an answer, we would have to do 6.0 times 10 to the second newtons. The force of gravity acting on Christina. Now we're going to use Newton's second law. We are going to sum the forces. We're going to figure out the net force. Now, because force is a vector, we always have to identify the direction that we are summing the forces in. So we're going to start out by summing the forces in the y direction. When we sum the forces in the y direction, anytime we sum the forces, we look at our free body diagram. We identify the forces acting in that direction. So Miss Wicket, 
please look at the free body diagram and identify the forces acting in the y direction. Um, the force normal and the force gravity. Okay. Those are the two forces, if you look at the free body diagram, acting in the y direction. Please tell me whether those forces are positive or negative. Mari. Um, positive. Both positive. How do you know that? Aha. Look at your free body diagram. Well, down, so you know up is positive and down is negative. So the force normal is the force of gravity okay. negative. This is the magnitude of the force. The free body, the body diagram gives us the direction. So we know the magnitude of the force of gravity is 600 newtons, but the force of gravity was down clearly in our free body diagram. So when we sum the forces, we have negative force of gravity plus the force normal. This force normal is up, force of gravity is down. This is equal to mass times acceleration because of Newton's second law. And because acceleration is a vector, we need to identify the, the direction. It's going to be the same as the direction of the force. What, Christina, was your acceleration in the y direction while you were experiencing the force I was applying to you in the desk? Acceleration in the y direction. No, that's, that is the acceleration due to gravity, something entirely different. Who can help her out here? What's her, what was her acceleration in the y direction? David? Zero. Zero, right? She didn't move up or down, you only moved horizontally. So your acceleration in the y direction was actually equal to zero. So we get mass times zero is equal to zero. So what you get is that the force normal minus the force of gravity equals zero. And this is a good thing, because now we can add the force of gravity to both sides, and we get that the force normal equals the force of gravity, which is equal to, we already have the number, 597.8, or 6.0 times 10 to the second newtons. In other words, the force normal and the force of gravity have the same magnitude force, but they're in opposite directions, as you can see in the free body diagram. So again, this gives us the magnitude of the force, and the free body diagram gives us the direction. So, so far we have figured out the force normal and the force of gravity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the acceleration in, of uh, Christina in the x direction. In order to do that, we're going to now sum the forces in the x direction. Please sum the forces in the x direction. In other words, look at the free body diagram and identify the forces in the x direction in our free body diagram. Sam, please. Um. The A. What is it? Oh, force acceleration. What? No? No, she, she wasn't right. I'm sorry, Connie. Who gave me, she gave me bogus she information. Me she did. Uh, Good job, Connie. Actually. No, this is fun. Maybe Meredith could feed you the right information. Do I tell her? Do you tell her? She's feeding. Here. Apply. Ah, yes, the force applied. Remember, it's the force that I'm applying. It's the okay. applied force. So the force applied. And then the force of friction. Force of friction. Positives and negatives, right? Uh, force applied is positive. And the force of friction is negative. Negative because the force of friction is to the left. Positive because the force applied is to the right. Remember that is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction because we're summing the forces in the x direction. We have all the numbers here. The force applied was 750 minus the force of friction, which is 650. That's equal to the mass, 61, multiplied by the acceleration in the x direction. In other words, Christina's acceleration in the x direction is 750 minus 650 divided by 61. At this point, I should hear the happy calculator buttons going, the calculator calisthenics. Last thing we want to discover on a quiz and final exam is to calculate the three, three, four, four. I'm sorry, say again. 1.639344262. That's plenty. Independent confirmation of this number? Yes. Yeah. Great. So we get 1.6 meters per second squared is the acceleration of Christina in the x direction. Part D. Yes, Andy. Uh, even though 61 is equal 
pairs of kilograms, it's still reduced for sign weight. Ah, okay, so let's work through the dimensions here. So the question is, how do we get meters per second squared out of this? Who can answer that question? How do we get meters per second squared out of this? Because what we have here is the acceleration in the x-direction, this in dimensions is going to be newtons divided by kilograms. Yeah. Hold up. So a newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared, and we're dividing that by kilograms. Okay. The kilograms cancel out. Yeah. The kilograms cancel out. How do the kilograms cancel out? Anybody remember I used the phrase before? Flip the guy and multiply. Remember the guy is kilograms divided by one, so this is equal to kilograms times meters per second squared. When we flip the guy and multiply, we get one over kilograms. Kilograms cancel out, we get meters per second squared. So yes, we do end up with meters per second squared out of it because newtons divided by kilograms is meters per second squared. Good question. Part, yes, Nick? Uh, where are we getting the three parts of the equation, the F? Ah, okay, I understand the question. So where is, like, what's this? Yes. Okay. So, it goes from the net force equals mass to times acceleration to this. Because this is the net force, right? The sum of the forces in the y direction. Well, in the y direction, we have the force normal minus the force of gravity. So this is the net force, and the net force equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. But it is a common confusion that I probably should have gone through. But the net force is this piece. So the net force in the x direction is the force applied minus the force of friction, and that's equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. Good. Part D. <clears throat> if Christina starts at rest, how long would it take for her to travel 2.0 meters? Not that I have 2.0 meters of space to work with, but hypothetically, if I did, how long would it take for her to travel 2.0 meters? Who's got an idea for how we can do it? Nah, Nick's been driving the bus. I need other people to come up to the front, driving the bus. Thank you for driving the bus today. Brian? Um, well, you know the acceleration in the x direction? True. And you know that um, the change in v? True. 2.0 meters. I agree with this. And the initial velocity is zero meters. I agree with everything you've said so far. So we use a UAM equation. Ah, how is it that we know we can use a UAM equation, Meredith? Because it's a constant velocity. Ah, no, it's not because it's a constant velocity. Come on. Three variables. Ah, again, it's not because you have three variables. Again, I can give you. I'm sorry? Acceleration. Acceleration, that's one word. Ah, the acceleration is constant. The acceleration equals a number, therefore we can use UAM, therefore we can review. So we can use UAM. We have the acceleration in the x direction. We know the initial velocity is equal to zero, as Brian said, and the displacement in the x direction is 2.0 meters. So please give me the equation that we can use, the UAM equation we can use to figure out how long this will have taken. Jessica? Um. We have acceleration, the initial, and displacement. Uh, velocity, initial acceleration, and um, delta x. Velocity, initial delta x, acceleration, we're looking for delta t. Okay. Um, we can use uh, delta x equals velocity, initial, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. Um, delta x equals velocity, initial, times delta t. Jessica, what's going on in your head? No, we don't have delta. Let's finish it. Let's take a look. Okay, um, plus one half acceleration times delta t squared. What did you say we don't have? Delta t. But that's what we're looking for. Oh, right. Right, okay. So delta t is what we're looking for. That's okay. So two equals, the displacement was two. The velocity initial was zero, so this whole piece goes away. 
plus one half times the acceleration, which we got to be 1.63934 times delta t squared. Delta t then is equal to 2 times 2 divided by 1.63934, the square root of how long? Yes? So 1.6 seconds with two saves. 